My name is Elliot, and I had a best friend named Sam Pollock. We grew up together, inseparable since the age of five. He was the guy you could always count on. Charismatic, smart, and fiercely loyal. We shared every significant life moment together, from our first day of school to our first heartbreaks and beyond. Then, six years ago, Sam died in a car accident. The details are not important. Bottom line is, it was sudden, shocking, and devastating. It took a while to get back to some semblance of normalcy, as he was my best friend and one who I shared a lot of memories with. But life, as it does, went on. This is where things take an awkward turn. It was a quiet Sunday night when I found myself in the deepest corners of the internet, bouncing from one social media platform to another out of boredom. That's when I saw it. A notification popped up on my screen. A friend request from someone. It took me a minute to realize who the person was, and when I did, I froze, staring at the monitor. It was Sam. There was no doubt about it. I deleted him from my friend's list a few years back. It was simply too painful to have his profile there, constantly reminding me of him. And now, I was getting a friend's request from that same account. Surely, it must be someone hacking his account for some reason. Some troll looking for attention. I clicked on the profile, and there he was. His smiling face. The same profile picture he had used for years. The account was active, with posts dating up to a little over two years ago. This somewhat supported the theory of the hacked account. But that must have been a pretty committed troll to do that for two years, every day. The posts were ordinary at first. Quotes, song lyrics, and random thoughts. Then they became specific. Details about Sam's life that only he and I would know. He would display these details in long-form texts, like monologues, often with philosophical twists and thoughts. It was as if Sam himself was alive and updating his account, which couldn't have been. I accepted the friend request and sent him a message. I kept it simple and neutral, knowing I was dealing with an impersonator. Hey dude, what's up? He responded almost immediately, as if he had the reply ready to go. Who is this? Yeah, you want to play games, I thought to myself. I'm Elliot. Who are you? I'm Sam. Stop lying. I know you're not Elliot. How did you get access to that account? Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. This isn't nice of you, dude. Stop playing. That account belongs to someone who's now dead. A good friend of mine. Find something else to do in your spare time, please. I waited for several minutes. Then I saw him typing again. The typing animation lasted for more than a minute, so I expected a long message. Instead, the animation went away and no message came through. Then, as I was about to write something else, another message appeared. Who the hell are you? This confused me more than anything else. If this was a troll, he was really going out of his way to stay immersed in the role. I kept having that thought in the back of my head that something wasn't right. I knew it couldn't have been Sam. I haven't believed in ghosts ever since I was eight but the thought of what if was still there, although I was ignoring it. There must be a simpler and more earthy explanation than that. At this point, I was slightly annoyed because I couldn't decide whether this was a hoax or legit. My reasoning was screaming hoax, but how did you get access to that account? You've been using it for a little over two years. You know this counts as identity theft, right? I wrote. I waited for a response, but nothing came. He was still online, and I knew he saw my message, but he was no longer responding. My last message scared him most likely, just as I was about to type another thread in. I saw the typing animation. The message that came through confused me even more. I just checked your IP address, bastard. I know where you are. Sign out and delete the account now. At this point, I was getting angry. I was almost positive that this was a hacker most likely someone who knew Sam and was playing a sick joke on those in his friends list. I replied bluntly, Or what? Or I will come meet you in person. At this point, it was already near midnight. 
but I was already too engaged to quit. Come then, I said, and leaned back on my chair. As soon as I typed those words in, Sam's account went offline. I guess he's had his fill of banter for the night, although I was now fairly confident that this was just an impersonator. There was something bugging me still. Why would someone hack my friend's account and use it for two years, almost daily, just to post benign stuff? Something wasn't adding up. The entire event fired me up a bit, causing me to lose my sleep. So I did what any smart person would do in my position. Started wasting time on the internet. I watched a few videos and then started a podcast, hoping it would put me in a sleeping mood. Then I heard movement in the bushes outside my window. I took my headset off and focused to make sure I wasn't mistaking. I wasn't. It sounded as if someone was creeping through the bushes toward my window. The light was off in my room, but whoever was out there could probably see the light coming from my monitor. I stood still in my chair and held my breath, trying to see outside. The window was to my right, but I didn't have a clear view of the yard. I could only peek through a small, inclined angle. The shuffling was now right by my window, and it was making my skin crawl. Who was that? Then, my brain suddenly snapped to reality. I remembered the conversation I just had with the supposed Sam impersonator, and all my senses activated immediately. What if that guy actually came to my home and was right there sneaking under my window? I couldn't hear any more noises outside. So I decided to turn my chair slightly toward the window. Although everything was quiet, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was there, looking at me from the shadows. The problem was that my gun was upstairs, and getting it meant moving in front of the window frame. I had to take my chances, though. I stood up slowly, careful not to make any sound, and approached the window as cautiously as I could. I peeked outside with all my senses on high alert. There was nothing there. Outside the warm July night, the dark bushes, and Sam's face with a blank stare fixating me. I screamed and jumped back, tripping over the chair and falling to the floor. I ran upstairs with only one thought in my mind. Get away from that face. Who was that? What's going on? Where am I? I know that the story you've heard may sound confusing, but try being me. My name is Sam Pollock and I'm alive and well. I haven't died in any car accident. However, my friend Elliot Huskins did six years ago. What you've just heard is an accurate description of the interaction between myself and someone using Sam's account that night. His account has been inactive for the past six years except for that night when it suddenly came online and sent me a friend's request. The exchange between us happened exactly as you've heard. I did go to Sam's home because I tracked his IP and that's where the messages were coming from. I looked through the backyard window into his room, but no one was there. I even called the door and spoke to his family. They told me that they've kept his room intact, exactly as it was the day he died. They even invited me in to look at his PC, and that's when I found the story you've heard in a Word document on the desktop. The document had been created that night several minutes before me arriving at the house.